Hey everybody, this is Heather. I just uh, wanted to make a video and talk to you guys about my breast cancer diagnosis and my journey through this from the diagnosis to the treatment, everything in between. I just wanted to share it with you um, in hopes that some of you that may be going through this, maybe you've gotten a a diagnosis of breast cancer or you're going through treatment maybe you know somebody who is whatever the case may be I just want to help you in some way give you some hope take away some fear you may have and just be honest and open with the experience that I've had and um, just let you know that you're not alone and and cancer when you hear you have cancer, it's a very scary place to be in, and it's very lonely, and I just want you to know, we may not even know each other, but you are very cared about. You're loved, and you're cared about, and I don't want you to feel alone, and I want you to know that you have hope, and I want to ease any, any worries that I can that you have on your mind so that's why I'm making this video I'm not a youtuber I just want to share my story with you in hopes that it will help you and uplift you and give you encouragement somehow and I want to be open with experiences I've had and just tell you the truth so that you know maybe you'll find a glimmer of hope through this and and um so bear with me i'm not a professional at this just um bear with me and i'll try to not to make this too long i may i may make it into separate videos because there's a lot to go through to put into one video and i'm sure you don't want to sit here and listen to me for an hour so i may just i may just talk to you up until my diagnosis and then maybe make another video for everything else um, a separate video so I was um, diagnosed on January the 11th 2021 so just a few months ago and it was two days before my birthday I was 36 years old at the time of my diagnosis I have no family history of cancer. Um, my mother didn't have it. My grandmothers didn't have it. And you know, usually that's what they go by. If your if your mother or grandparents have it, then you have you know it, it carries through the genes, your genetics, and um, but I didn't have any of that. So cancer never really was one of those things that was on my radar. As I better watch out for that. Um, other things maybe but not not breast cancer so um, the way I found out that something was wrong is the way a lot of women find out I was in the shower that's where I always examine myself and I always just use my hands and soap for my chest and I just washed and then my left breast I was washing it with my hand and I felt what felt like a the size of a quarter but it had the the hardness and the shape of kind of like an irregular marble it was very hard and it felt like it was right under the my layer of skin it wasn't deep I didn't have to press hard to find it. I mean, you could practically see it sticking out without even having to touch it. And this was in late November of 2020. And I'm the type of person, I already have a lot going on as it is. And I really didn't want anything else. I really didn't think I could handle anything else, any more stress. So I kind, I just 
I guess I kind of just wanted to pass it off as uh, maybe it's my menstrual cycle, you know. And I've never had a change in my breast during my menstrual cycle. A lot of women do. A lot of women have um, just lumps and things that come up and then after the menstrual cycle they go away. I've always just had a little bit of tenderness. No changes um, in my breast, but I noticed this and it was at the end of November and in December, the end of December, you know, you have Christmas and all of that and I didn't want to, I didn't want to deal with anything else, to be honest with you. I felt like I was overloaded with stress. And I just, I didn't want to deal with it. And I didn't think it was anything, uh, to be honest with you at first. So, I called my primary care doctor. I talked to her. And she's a very dear friend of mine. And um, I informed her of what was going on with me. And she scheduled me for a mammogram and an ultrasound, which I had on January the 11th of 2021. So this is still during COVID uh, where you can't have visitors, you can't have people with you, you know, you're wearing the mask, all that, which honestly, it makes things harder because you have to be alone. And sometimes you just need, you know, somebody with you to just to not feel so alone when you're scared. Um, so I went for my mammogram and my ultrasound, and I'm sure you know most of you know what that's like. Um, if you don't know what it's like, I'm just gonna sum it up for you. Pretty much, um, they take they took me back to a, a room where I could change. You take off everything from the waist up, and you put a gown on. And then you sit in a little waiting area until the um, tech comes out and takes you back for the mammogram. And I had the mammogram first. And it wasn't painful. A um, little awkward, but it wasn't painful. My tech was very, very sweet. She was a young girl. Um, and she took... Um, she took my mammogram pictures and then she told me just to go out and have a seat so I went out and I was still in my little fancy gowns that they give you and uh, I sat out there and then she called me back in to the mammogram room and then I kind of thought hmm this this doesn't feel right something seems like it's wrong and she said that the radiologist had looked at my pictures and wanted to see more pictures of my left breast. Now, mind you, the reason I came for a mammogram is because of the huge knot, the marble-like knot that was on my right breast. So I'm thinking if there's anything going on, it's the right breast but she wanted pictures of my left breast. I was having no symptoms, no pain, no, no lumps, knots, nothing. Nothing to be concerned about with my left breast. So while she was taking the pictures, I was feeling a little nervous. Um, and then she said, okay, I'll, get, I'll give her these pictures and um, you just go right out there and have a seat, and uh, they'll be coming to take you for your ultrasound. So I sat down and waited, and then the ultrasound tech came and took me down to the ultrasound room. Um, basically, if you've had an ultrasound, like I said, you know pretty much what they do. If you don't, it's just a table that you lay on. And you, whichever breast they're looking at, if they're looking at your right breast, you have your head behind your head, your head behind your, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting so 
so many stuff going through my mind. You put your hand behind your head, um, and then they put the gel on you, and they rub the, the probe over you and um, examine it. And first of all, I do want to let you know one thing. Um, during my ultrasound, I kept hearing, like, different times. Like, the tech or would say 3 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And I was thinking, what is this? And they basically view your breast as a clock. So if they say three o'clock, they're trying to, they're telling at what part of the breast that they're looking at. So if you're going through an ultrasound and you hear them saying whatever o'clock, that's what it means. That's what part of your breast that they are watching or, or looking at. So she does an ultrasound of both breasts and she says, I'll be back. I'm going to go show these to the radiologist. So I'm sitting there, you know, just waiting. And then it's a matter of minutes and the radiologist came in and she came over I, and I had already cleaned up the gel that they put on you. I had already wiped all that up and I had my robe on and tied and she came over and she said she wanted to look for herself. So I, I felt like something was definitely wrong when she told me that. So I lay down and um, she put the gel back over me and she looked at my left breast. and. Um, Then she looked at my right again, and she they gave me some cloths to clean up with, and she said, I need to talk to you. And of course, then I knew this isn't good. So I sat up on the edge of the ultrasound table, and she was on the radiologist, which if you have to go through breast cancer. I pray you have a radiologist like I had. I will forever be grateful to her. Her, not, her name is Dr. Ingram and she was, she made a very scary time a lot easier for me because she was so kind and so thorough in her job. So she sat down on a stool and we were, she was right in front of me. And she said, I'm not trying to scare you, but I want to tell you the truth. She said, um, I don't like the shape of the lump that's on your right breast. I wish it wasn't, I wish it was more rounded instead of irregular shaped but I'm more concerned about your left breast which floored me and she asked me if I had ever been in a car accident where maybe a seat belt like I had slammed against the seat belt really hard she said that's what it looks like it looks like something has you know impacted that breast so hard like maybe an accident, a car accident, and the seat belt just pressed into it so hard. And I've, that's never happened to me. So she told me she was 90% sure that it was cancer. And when you hear that, it's kind of like you hear that word and then everything else sounds like mumbles because... I feel like your mind is trying to wrap around it and there's so much I really feel like when you hear those words you need to have um, you need to have somebody with you somebody that you love a family member because it's hard even you know with a family member it would be hard but when you're alone, it makes it that much harder. So she told me she was going to go ahead and refer me to a breast surgeon. She was going to 
put in an order. Um, I'm sorry. She's, I take that back. She said she needed to do a bilateral breast biopsy. So she needed to, bi to do a biopsy of both breasts. But she could not do that until the order was put into the computer system by my primary care doctor. And I told her, I said, I'm, you know, I can talk to my doctor. I can get, get her to, to order that. Um, Cause she's wonderful. She's absolutely wonderful. She's just a blessing to me. And she said, well, if you can get her to get that, let her know that we need that before I can block you off on my schedule. Now, this was January the 11th when I had the mammogram and the ultrasound. She wanted to do the biopsy on January the 19th. So, it gets scheduled, it gets booked, and it's time for my biopsy on the 19th. Um, breast biopsy is very, it can be very nerve-wracking. Um, I will tell you that when I left, maybe I shouldn't get into the breast biopsy yet. Maybe I should do that as another video. But when I left from the appointment with the, for the mammogram and the ultrasound, I was so nervous. My teeth were chattering. I was shaking all over. I was in the room where you, you take your your gown off and you put your regular clothes on. I was in there and I was so nervous. I was shivering and shaking and just, I was a mess. And I felt like somebody had just poured cold water all over me. And I automatically thought, how, how am I going to tell my my first thought was, how am I going to tell my children? I have a 13-year-old son who is the beat of my heart. And I have a 9-year-old. Well, she'll be 9 in a few days. She's 8 for right now. But uh, I have an 8-year-old little girl. And she's just... She's my little... She's my treasure. And I have another, um, not another little girl. And she's waiting on me in heaven. And that's, maybe that's another video, but that's not for right now. Um, but I thought, how, how do I tell them that, how do I tell them this? Because, I couldn't imagine what it would have been like growing up and my mom coming with that kind of news. It's hard enough to understand things as an adult and when you try to see them through a child's eyes. Oh, I guess you just, you just want everything to be just easy for them. You don't want them to know, you know, how quickly things can change for the worse. And I just really struggled with that, how how they would deal with that. And I tried to just be positive with it, you know, when I told them. I didn't want to hide it from them. I didn't want them finding out about it um, from somebody else. And I kept it Pretty much, the only people that I told were my parents, um, my husband. He was with me, of course. He knew first. Um, my parents and my kids and my brother. Both my two brothers, but one knew first and my other brother found out. And I told... Um, it's really strange is I have a friend that I worked with at the hospital for several years and I don't get to see her a lot but she's the type of friend that you can go years without seeing them and you just 
nothing changes. You love them. The minute you pick, you see each other, you pick pick up right off, and they will always just you know have a place in your heart. And that's the way I feel about her. And I haven't seen her in probably two to three years. And we went out for my birthday. We went out to eat. And I posted a few pictures on my Facebook and she messaged me and she said um, something along the lines of I'm worried about you. Um, there's like a sadness in your eyes in your Facebook pictures. Are you okay? And I told her what was going on. And I just thought that's so strange that you know, God would lay that on her heart because how else would she know? And then she reached out to me and she sent me a beautiful card, prayer bracelets for my whole family in every color of the rainbow. And she's, you know, checked on me and just sent me very, a lot of encouraging things. And I just... I would want to be that type of friend for somebody going through going through this and I appreciate her so much and I did tell two of my best friends my lifelong best friends I told them about it but I didn't tell everybody else until the day before my surgery so I think what I'll do is um, is in this here I appreciate you listening and I hope that somehow I can help you in some way and um, if you're going through this if you're facing breast cancer if you just you can just comment below pray for me and I will keep you in my prayers because that's what we that's what we do for each other and I hope that whatever road in your life you're on whatever your needs are whatever journey you're on I hope that you find Jesus in the midst of it and that you know you are loved and cared for by him and that no matter how bleak things may look, no matter what the doctors say or the st statistics say, no matter what, God loves you. And really that's all you need to know right now is that you're loved. You're loved by the one who spoke the universe into existence. He loves you. And you hold on to that. And um, I'll try and make another video um, more about the biopsy because that's really a, that's a very nerve-wracking thing before you go through it. And I just want to, you know, try to ease your mind. So thank you for watching and um my heart goes out to you. My prayers are with you. And just remember you're loved.